All right, guys, here we go. Section 3.3. We're going to be breaking this one up into two parts. So part one, uh, we are now getting into logarithms. Um, so I'm taking you to page 268 of your book to start things out uh, before we get into the notes. Um, and I know you guys cover logs in Algebra 2. So, of course, we'll be expanding on those things a little bit. Um, but a couple reminders that are great for you to see on this page. Um, when you have your growth and decay graphs that we see like this, a log graph is simply the inverse of these graphs, right? So here's my here's my growth. Uh, here's the line, the black line, y equals x. Remember, an inverse is just a reflection across that black line. So if my blue line is my growth, then the logarithm is just the inverse of that. So it's a mirror image across that black line, and that's where that pink gra graph comes from. So when you have a growth graph, Remember that you have a horizontal asymptote at zero. Well, when you do an inverse, everything flips. Remember, domain becomes range, range becomes domain. All of your x, y values switch. So there used to be a horizontal asymptote at zero. A log graph has a vertical asymptote at zero, right? And so there's just kind of our basic parent function for logs. Um, couple rules down here that I wanted to remind you of. Um, and I have some of these on the notes that we'll be looking at here in just a second. Um, but one of the biggies is when we convert from exponent form to log form, um, here's kind of the general model that you see right here. So I have uh, y equals log base b of x. Um, and then the way you would write that in exponential form is b to the y power equals x. So here's kind of the general idea. The whole purpose of using logarithms is to isolate an exponent. If you're solving an equation and your variable is the exponent, well, how do you get the exponent by itself? Uh, we simply do that by switching it into log form. So this is simply a change of notation, a change of form from exponent form, right? So if, again, if I'm solving that equation and I'm trying to get, let's just say I'm trying to get y by itself, uh, by taking this and switching it to log form is what puts y by itself. So when something is in log form, what you're seeing that the isolated term is the exponent. If we're going back the other way, so we would read, here's my base. I would re read my base to this power equals x, right? And that's how we're going to convert those guys. So a couple rules you can hang on to uh, because of that. So whenever I have log base b of 1 equals 0, um, it's because anything to the 0 power is 1. So if I took this and switched it into exponent form, it's going to look like this. And then, and this is, of course, the way it's going to make a little more sense to us. But, um, but yeah, so uh, one of the big, big rules that we're going to be looking at today is anytime your base and this value are the same, your answer is whatever the exponent is. Um, and so this is technically b to the first power, so that's why our value is 1. Um, whatever that exponent is, so in this case it's just a y, then y is the, the answer. That would be our result. Um, and then the last one is anytime you have a base raised to the power of a log with the same base, then x is automatically your answer. And we'll be looking at some of that too. So I just wanted you to see, guys see this page. Let's go through some of these after I make it unblurry. So these are what I put at the top of the notes for today, just a couple of those basic rules. Uh, the switch in forms. So we got exponent form and log form. Um, and then these are the three main rules uh, that we're going to be looking at. The one I didn't mention from the book is this one. Anytime that there is no base given to you, um, then our base is automatically a base of 10. Right, so that's like our our given value for a base if there is not one presented to you within the problem. So don't forget about that. Um, and then we talked about these two rules already. So let me go through a couple problems, and then you'll kind of see how those rules play out within these. So if we had something like log base three of twenty-seven, um, so remember one way to look at that. There's a couple ways you could do this, but one way to look at that is. So remember that 27 is the same thing as 3 to the third power, right? 
So this essentially means the same thing as having a 27 right there. Um, so if you look at this rule, again, anytime this value and this value are equal, then this is automatically your answer. So because those are both three, that makes this three my solution. So that's just like one of the ways those rules can play out. Uh, same thing on this one. This is base two. We can see this is two to the one half power so that we can apply the same rule. I'm going to put it on this side. So instead of the square root of two, I'm going to call it two to the one half power. And now I can apply the same rule. Those two numbers are the same, which makes the one half my answer. Um, a, a lot of these do this, this sort of rewriting them to try to make these numbers the same um, in, order to, in order to solve these. Uh, what, if, what if we said 1 16th? Um, if you just think, and I always kind of want you to think back to these things as well. So what they're giving us right now is log base 4 of 1 16th. So what that means is 4 to what power is 1 over 16? Right, that's kind of another way we can interpret that to try to make sense of it. 4 to what power is 1 over 16? So how can I rewrite that 1 16th to be 4 to some power? So isn't 1 16th the same thing as 4 to the negative second power? Right, because that negative is what causes the four squared to go on bottom, right? So, but it, by writing it this way, now I can apply the rule and say, okay, those two numbers are the same. Automatically negative two is my answer. And if you apply that to what I was talking about up here, where I said, okay, four to what power is one over 16? Well, it's negative two. Four to the negative second power is one over 16. Uh, what if we have a value of 1, log base 5 of 1? Again, what you're saying is 5 to what power is 1, right? Well, in this case, 5 to the 0 power is 1. So you could rewrite it like I've been doing on the previous couple, and you could say log base 5 of, and I can put 5 to the 0 power instead of a 1 right there, because it means the same thing, and that makes these two numbers the same, so we know zero is our solution. But really, if you start interpreting these as five to what power is one, you might get here a little quicker. On this one, uh, base of 10, of 10, so 10 to what power is 10? 10 to the first power is 10. So. Those, those rules that we're seeing at the beginning of this are there to help us simplify problems like this. So let me take you down to this guy. So these guys all just base of 10. So what if we said log of 1,000? So what you have to remember on this is when we say log of 1,000, what we're saying is log base 10 of 1,000. Right? That's, there's an automatic base of 10 if they don't put one there. We have to know that it's there. Um, so again, you're saying, okay, so 10 to what power is a thousand, right? Or you could try to rewrite it like we were doing. Oops, sorry. Here we go. So we're going to say log base 10. So I know a thousand is the same thing as 10 to the third power, right? So uh, in, in this view, now I can clearly see that because those are equal, the rule says our answer is 3. But again, I want you to remember why that rule works. What we're really saying is 10 to what power is 1,000? Right? Well, 10 to the third power is 1,000. So that's why our answer is 3. Um, let's just kind of go down the list here. So, of course, we want to rewrite that cube root as a one-third power. So we would say log 10 to the one-third. And remember, if they don't put a base here, the base is automatically 10. So again, now I can see those numbers are the same. One third is my answer. Uh, log of 1 over 100, here's where you got to start. As soon as you see that 100 on bottom, you got to start thinking negative exponents, right? So uh, as I see the 100 on bottom, let me put this one over here. 
So remember, you are saying automatic base of 10, right down there. Let me just rewrite it. So log base 10, 1 over 100. So again, what your, what your thought process is, is 10 to what power is 1 over 100, right? And we would say, well, it's 10 to the negative second power is 1 over 100. Therefore, my answer is negative 2. Um, and then the last one, the other rule that we saw is whenever you have a base raised to the log of the same base, remember there's automatically a base of 10 right there because they didn't put something else, uh, then whatever follows that is your answer. So in this case, 5 would be our answer. It's just a rule that we have for these guys. Um, so we saw that one right up here. This is our rule for that. Okay, so you have a base raised to the log of the same base. Uh, that x becomes your answer. And so that's why our answer is 5. Let me take you over to this. So some real basic log equations. And again, uh, if they don't put a base, automatic base of 10. Um, and we're going to see these much better if we rewrite these into exponent form. So I'm going to take this out of log form and we're going to say 10 to the third power equals x. Because this is obviously the way we're used to seeing them. And so it's going to make a little more sense if we put them in exponent form. Uh, 10 to the third we know is 1,000, so x is 1,000. So same thing on this guy. If we rewrite this into exponent form, we're going to say 2 to the fifth power equals x. And so we would say x is 32. So just usually by rewriting them into the other form is going to be the best way to um, solve them, to help, help us make sense of them. Um, when you have a log base e, and e we talked about in our previous lesson, uh, they call that a natural log. Um, and so Anytime you see this LN, uh, that stands for natural log. Yes, I know that's not in the order we would read it, but uh, I think it goes back to the Latin translation on that. So uh, that is an LN, but it does represent natural logs. Um, so whenever we see that, it automatically means you have a log base E for natural logs. So let's see if we can fill in a couple of these guys. This will be the end of part one here. So we're trying to do some of this without a calculator. So when I see a uh, natural log of cube root of e, remember, natural log automatically means log base e. The cube root of e, I would write as e to the one third power. And so now by putting it in that form, we can clearly see that our answer is one third, since those two values are the same. Uh, again, over here, natural log e to the 6. Uh, some of these, you might just start recognizing what the answer is pretty quickly without having to change the formatting like I did here. Natural log of e to the 6th. Again, natural log means log base e. And then e to the 6th. Right? Again, those numbers are the same. Therefore, 6 is my answer. And then last one, e to the natural log of 5. Uh, I'm going to write this a little bigger. And again, they did not put um, a base on this, but we already know uh, that this natural log means log base e, so log e of 5. Um, and based on the rule that we just looked at on the last page, 5 would be our answer. I don't know why that thing keeps popping up. Um, so if you want to take a look at these last couple with me. Um, some of these things we could certainly use a calculator. Um, and so I'm just going to show you how you could put some of this into a calculator. Uh, maybe cases where it's needed. Uh, could also be cases where um, you just need to check an answer. So remember, we already know the answer to this. Based on what we just saw up above, natural log, automatic base E. E would be the same as E, so therefore 11 should be my answer. But I just want to go over a couple calculator things with you. So I should have a natural log button that looks something like this. So I have my log, I have my natural log. Uh, 
Uh, so I'm going to do natural log. And then I'm going to type in e to the 11th. So here's my e button right there. It's in blue, so I'm going to hit second e. And now I can put in my 11. And just like we thought, answer was going to be 11. So we could certainly put it in that way. Um, same thing on this one. Should already know what our answer is going to be on that one. Should be E. Um, but we can always type it in and check it. So I'm going to say E to the natural log of E. And they always prompt me for an exponent, so I'm just going to say E to the first. And... There's our E, right? About 2.72 is our E value. Um, if we wanted to do something like this, you guys probably already know these buttons, but I'm going to hit natural log. Uh, my seventh root is under my math button. I'm going to hit math and choose this fifth option. And now I can put in a seventh root of E. to the first and so there we go so um, anyway so all that stuff can go in our calculator if you ever have calculator issues on that stuff just let me know um, but that is the end of part one